The success of the Prince was meteoric, I suppose, and it captured the zeitgeist. It was that magical moment where it was a movement instantly. But to be honest, I was more concerned that Revolver Records in Islington didn't have it in the reggae section. I was pissed off with them. The guy said it was like novelty, and I was really offended. Suddenly, because we'd only done this one single deal with Two Tone, we were in a situation where all record companies were coming after us, which was a very unusual position to be in. It was pretty much me and Mike went to do the rounds of meetings. We'd have these incredible expensive lunches, sitting under palm trees in the atriums of enormous tower blocks with blokes with cigars. It was all just a blur, a surreal blur. They were all taking us to lunch, and we were trying to max out what we were getting out of it. I'd always choose the most expensive thing on the menu. Some of them, you felt, were simply doing their job. Oh, another latest thing, better make an appointment. There was this buzz going around town, and all these record bods would be ringing up, but they didn't even really know why they were asking us out. For us, it was like, bloody hell, we're in a big posh restaurant having a big posh nosh-up, but you just definitely felt that they didn't know who we were. What's your name again? What was the name of the band? It was like that. And they were probably just going back to the office and thinking, oh, I've done my bit. I've invited that latest thing around. You get this geezer saying to his secretary, Celia, will you go and buy these guys' record? I need to hear it. So you know what I mean? You're talking to people who haven't even heard the f***ing record. All they know is that this two-tone thing is apparently a phenomenon and they need a bit of it. Me and Mike were just very wary going to see all these people that were bullshitters. 